Hello everybody, this is Jack from Tofluency.com. Welcome to this live English lesson here on Facebook. Now, if you're watching the replay of this, either on Facebook or YouTube, then welcome to you. Hopefully, I'll see you in my next live lesson. But also check out the description to learn more about watching these lessons. If you are joining live, welcome to you. This is pretty cool. You can see my shadow up here. This office is, it gets pretty good light in here. I'm quite pleased with the light that we get. But there's also some lights above here for when it gets dark in the winter, for example. So today we are going to talk about books. We're going to talk about reading different books, book formats, and I'm also going to share a couple of quotes with you. There's one quote that I think is really important, and it will help you to enjoy your reading and to learn English while reading too. So if you are joining live, and if you are watching the replay, I'm going to have a question for you later, but right now, can you tell me where you are watching this from. So tell me where you are watching this from. Give me the city and the country. Or if you only want to give me the country, tell me the country too. Now also be sure to check out the description and the comments later if you're here live as I'll post some resources for you. Things like my free book, the five-step plan for English fluency. If you don't have this already, then get it now. It's free to download and it's really going to help you improve your English. I'll also leave details of my audio book that you can purchase and my full program. So be sure to check out the description. We've got Irish Graham here from Catalonia, very cool. I was in Barcelona this time last year, more or less, last June or July. It was incredibly busy with tourists. I was a tourist too. But I've been to Barcelona a few times. I love that city. And I hope my wife and I can go back again soon. We have got Abdul, um, Abdulaziz. Here, sorry about my pronunciation. Hopefully, I said your name nearly correctly. But thank you for joining, just saying hi. Everyone else, if you are joining live, then please let me know where you are watching this from. I'm just going to show you a couple of things. I'm going to turn my camera around. This is the corridor of my office, okay? Actually, someone's just coming out. I get too much, but I'll show you the corridor of the office in a second. I just met the, my neighbour the other day, and um, we had a really good chat. It's good to meet the people who work here. Let me turn the camera around again. We have Nantani from Recife, northeast of Brazil. Very cool. So you can see these are the other offices in the building, you might see some reflections too because they have these glass windows throughout the office building. But it seems like everyone's away at the moment. I think these guys are on lunch. They don't come in on um, Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays. So it's very, it's very quiet around here at the moment, which is nice. I also asked the guys if I'm being too loud in the office, because I like to speak very loudly when I'm teaching. And they said they can't hear me, which is great. I need to ask my neighbour to see if he can hear me as well. We have Bawa from Kurdistan region. Thank you for being here, Duwak City. Natani says, nice office, thank you very much. I gave a tour of this office not so long ago. But let's talk about books now, because that's the topic of today's live lesson. Now, I've just made a couple of notes. Uh, if you have been here before, you know that I don't 
really prepare for these lessons. Instead, I keep it very organic and spontaneous. However, today I have written a few things down. We're going to talk about ebooks, audiobooks, textbooks, phys physical books, and the difference between fiction and non fiction. Okay? Abigail is here. Hello. Luan is here. Hello to you. Now, my next question for everyone is this Do you prefer fiction or non fiction? Do you prefer reading fiction or non fiction? Fiction basically are novels. Non fiction are books like the books I have here, my business books, like How to Become an Entrepreneur, um, How Successful People Think. So let me know if you prefer fiction or non fiction. I'd love to see your comments below. Again, please answer if you're watching the replay or if you're watching live. Now, you might be wondering what else I have on my desk. This is the eraser for the whiteboard. These are my pens. Now, this is really interesting. Now, it'll be interesting to know if you know what this is. Okay? So, please leave your comments if you know what this is. I'll explain later. Um, we have, I like reading fiction. You can either say, I like to read fiction or I like reading fiction. Or, I prefer fiction, for example. Arena says both fiction and non-fiction. Very cool. Very cool. Um, keep your answers coming. Because we're going to move on soon and talk about the different types of books that we can read. Hopefully... Does that make sense to you? Or is it mirrored? Let me know if, if you can read that clearly. Or is it the wrong way around? Neela says, I prefer fiction. Very good. I prefer fiction. So my answer is... We have another fiction from Luana. My answer is this. I prefer non-fiction. I hardly ever read fiction books. I hardly ever read novels except for in different languages. So I enjoy reading novels in different languages, but in English, I never read novels. I never read fiction. Um, Abigail says, I prefer fiction. No, it's like a mirror. Okay, I thought so. So when the screen is like this, it's like a mirror. It's good to know. Thank you for letting me know. So as I say, I prefer non-fiction. I read a lot of business books. I read a lot of books on history as well. If you were in the last class, I shared my favorite book at the moment, which is Sapiens, The History of Human Evolution, or something like that, Sapiens. I shared that book in my last lesson. But what I've done recently, I'll turn my camera around so you can see properly, is I've bought quite a few new books. If you follow me on Snapchat, my username is to fluency, then you would have seen me share this book, The Ten Times Rule, and also one of my favorite books, which I had an ebook copy, but I don't know where it is now, The Magic of Thinking Big. This is quite an old book, but it's fantastic. I really enjoy it. I'm going to share a couple of other books with you. I've just bought this, The Obstacle is the Way. I have recommended this book in the past. And this is it. The Timeless Art of Turning tr Trials into Triumph. This just means, okay, trials, problems, difficult situations... And triumph is obviously success. So what it's trying to say is this. It, what this book teaches you is how to turn problems into success. And the fact that you get obstacles, problems, means that you're doing something worth doing. Okay? 
So this is related to learning English because as you learn English, you're going to have obstacles. You're going to have days when you don't feel good. You're going to find or come across words you don't understand. You're going to have conversations where you struggle, where you have problems trying to understand the situation. So it's all about using those problems to help you, to help you um, on your way to fluency. Now, something here, the timeless art. This means that this method has been used for a long time. And what it's trying to say is that it's going to last forever. So it's something you can use now or in the future. Now, if you're here live, I want you to do one quick thing. Click the like button on the screen, either the like or the love button. And I'll be able to see when you do that, which is really good. And it helps me grow this audience. It helps me reach more people. Thank you, everyone, for doing that. Let's have a look at another one. This one is a little book, How Successful People Think. And this is just thinking about mentality. So again, if you're learning English, you need to be able to think su successfully. You know, have the right mentality and mind frame so that you learn English fast. So those are a few of my new books. Let me know in the comment section, what was the last book that you got? What was the last book that you purchased? So let everyone know in the comment section. Again, do this if you're watching live. Do this if you are watching the replay. Let's go back to this now because you will notice that all the books I just showed you are physical books, okay? So I've bought these physical books. Um, a lot of people just call them simply books, just to say that's the old way of saying it. But it seems like now people have to clarify that it's a physical book. And I want to show you a quick difference between a couple of books I got. So this one is hard. This is a hard cover, okay? So it's called a hard cover. Whereas, let's get this one. This one is doesn't have a hard cover, and this is called a paperback. A paperback. So that's just a quick difference between two types of books there. Hard covers, they're more expensive, but they last longer. And paperbacks, which are cheaper, but they can easily get damaged. Let's have a look at what people are saying. Um, the Crossroads of Should and Must by L. Luna. Very cool. Danielle says, the last book I bought and read physical was The Girl You Left Behind by Jojo Moyes. This is really interesting. Please let me know other books that you have bought recently or the last book you, you bought. Okay. Let's go back to this now. And please uh, keep the likes and the hearts coming if you are enjoying this lesson. There's one more comment here. Think twice. Um, yeah, so Hoya says, think twice. Like, um, could you try repeating that sentence for me? Um, very cool. Abigail has a, a comment here. I used to read physical books. But now I'm used to reading ebooks because I can carry them on my iPad without the extra weight. Very good. I was going to talk about this because for the last five years I have been getting mainly ebooks and audiobooks for the reason Abigail mentioned because you can access them on your computer, on your phone, this phone here, on iPads, etc. And you don't have to carry them. So you can have thousands of books on your smartphone. So I've been mainly getting ebooks and audiobooks recently. 
I love audiobooks too because I listen to audiobooks when I'm in bed so I'm not looking at the screen. And also, I listen to audiobooks when I'm travelling too. And as an English learner, I recommend you get audiobooks and listen. Listen as much as possible. Podcasts, audiobooks, whatever you like listening to. Um, A couple of other comments I'm just going to read. My husband is here too. His book is Thinking in Java. Is that a coding book to learn how to code? Luana says, I don't remember because I don't like reading books. And Huya says, like books and PDF about agriculture. Very cool. So yeah, for the fast for sorry, for the past five years I've been mainly getting ebooks and audiobooks. However, I might start changing this and getting more physical books. And I'm going to explain why. So I think the biggest reason for this is because I spend so much time looking at my screen. I'm on my phone doing this live lesson now. I work on my computer. I'm always looking at a screen. And I think it's good to get a break. It's good to have a physical book to read to get a break. And I found that twice a day or so, while I've been working here in this building, I go to the balcony and I take a physical book with me. And I just read it, very simply. Have a cup of tea or, you know... um, have some coffee, something like that. So I've been doing that a lot more. And I think it's going to be good for me to take a little break from reading ebooks. The other thing as well, I think it's just also good to have that physical book. It's more tangible. Okay, this is a good word to know. More tangible. You can see it, you can feel it. And there's just something, as someone who grew up reading these types of books. I think it's very good to go back to this again. So Abigail has a question. Do you recommend reading and listening to a book at, a, at the same time? Definitely. Inside the to Fluency program, tofluency.com slash TFP, you can get the link below. Abigail, I know you are a member. So check out that tutorial on how to read the smart way. And I really recommend reading and listening at the same time and highlighting things as you go to reference later. Mara says, how do you spell it? Which word? Try and spell it and I'll correct that for you if I need to because I don't know which word you're talking about there. Um, Abigail says, yes, with three exclamation marks. Very cool. So yeah, let's share a quote now. Let's move on. I'm going to come to my computer, turn the screen around. This is my Facebook page. Um, I wonder, this is very interesting to me. If I go on the Facebook page, there I am. You can see see it's live. It's kind of cool. But I found this here, which is 50 quotes about reading. And this is the one I wanted to share with you. I'll highlight it. And I think this is a really important lesson to learn. Something to take from this live class. There comes a time when you have to choose between turning the page and closing the book. There comes a time when you have to choose between turning the page and closing the book. So what this means is... When you're reading a book, you make the decision whether to continue reading the book or to put it down. To put it down. And I've made a couple of videos on this. To put down a book. To stop reading it. And as an English learner, something I want you to know, and it's this. There is no reason to read a book you don't enjoy. There is zero reason to read a book you don't enjoy. 
And this is such an important thing to know. Because as an English learner, you've probably gone through school or language classes. And they give you books to read. It might be a textbook. It might be a physical book. No matter what it is. But in those classes, you have to read it. But as someone who is learning English independently, there is no reason why you have to read a book you don't want to read. Because reading is all about enjoyment. And you're going to learn so much if you read books that you enjoy. So when people ask me, what's the best book for learning English? I always say, it's the book that you're going to enjoy. And there are two things to keep in mind when talking about enjoying a book. The first one is, is this book on a subject that you find interesting? For example, I don't like reading novels, so I don't read them. I don't find them enjoyable. Maybe one day I'm going to, but right now I don't find them enjoyable. The second thing is, we enjoy books that we can understand. So maybe you're really into a subject like politics. But you might find a book on politics that is just too difficult for you right now. So it's finding that balance, okay, between subjects you're interested in and books that you can understand. Because we don't enjoy things that we don't understand, okay? Now, there's no easy solution here except for one thing that you can do. And I'm going to show you this. And I'll answer some questions in a second. So bear with me with the comment section. I'm going to go to Amazon.com. And let's just type in um, that book I was talking about before, Sapiens. Okay. So you can find this book here. It's showing me the hardcover for $20 because I've been buying this recently. But click on the Kindle edition. What you can do is look inside. I'm just going to move this over. You can look inside the book, okay? So you can click here and then start reading. You can start reading the book. If the first few pages are too difficult, find a different book. If the first few pages are interesting and you think it's going to be useful for you, then you can get this book. So this is just a little tip for you. Let's go to another one, just to show you again. Um, the obstacle is the way. Okay, so we go in the Kindle edition again on Amazon. Vera says, I love my Kindle. Me too. Although, as I said before, I'm starting to get more physical books. Again, it has this little look inside. You can look inside. And then... Um, go to the introduction, start reading, and then see if this is too difficult for you. See if you're going to enjoy this type of book. And if it is too difficult, then just find a, a different book instead. If it's good for you, then get this book and continue reading. So that is a quick way that you can find books that are going to be useful for you because you are unique you have your own preferences. You have your own ideas. You're at the level you are at right now. So find books that are perfect for you. I'm going to go back to the comment section now. Uh, the last book I read was a book writ written by Ernesto Mallow. Thank you for sharing, Monica. Uh, Mara says the word about normal books. Oh, yes. Tangible. Tangible. Let me go back to my computer. Or let me use this and write it down for you. It's like this. Tangible. There you go. This means something that you can feel or see or, you know, hold here. Something real, tangible. So also look this up in the dictionary too to get more examples. 
just saw here as well, Neela says, I think it's tangible. Thank you, the spelling is perfect. Vera says, I like reading crime books, very cool. Bois says, put it down, we are feeling tired if we read for a long time. Yeah, it's good to put down a book after a while, especially if you are tired. We've got Martiniano from Brazil here. I hope you enjoyed my message yesterday. Bois says, I think the best book for us is novels. Novels about present, past and future, it's the best. Yeah, and again, for me, I don't like reading novels in English. I like reading novels in Spanish, however. And find books that you love. Find simple novels as well. Use that trick I just showed you to see if that book is going to be for you. Um, Victoria says, hi, I would like to read a book without being sleepy. Yeah, sometimes, you know, you read a book and you start getting tired. Manuel says, I'm reading Born to Run, which you recommended the other day. Fantastic. Yeah, Born to Run is a really good book. I hope you're enjoying it, Manuel. Vera says, a curious incident of the dog in the night. It's great and easy to read. Yes, I have read this book as well. It's a fantastic book. And as Vera says, it's very easy to read. Abigail says this, I love ebooks for three reasons. The first one you're talking about, you can decide to, to try it first. The second one, because it's usually cheaper. And the third one is I can synchronize where I'm reading. This is very true. If you're reading an ebook and you're reading on your smartphone, later that day, if you're using your iPad, you have the same spot. I have that problem that with physical books here, I need to take them home if I want to read them at home too. Igor says, hello, I, I have an interview in two days. Can you give me some tips to help me? Send me a message on Facebook and I'll send you a couple of tips. Martinian says, yes, your message was great and really useful. Thank you. Um, my English knowledge isn't tangible, but I feel that it is improving with Jack's help. Thank you very much, Marcello. Or Marcello, I still don't know how to pronounce your name. Send me a message and use the voice recorder or just use the video and say your name for me. And then next time, I'm going to say it properly. Fingers crossed, hopefully. Very cool. Okay. We've talked a lot about books today. We've talked about the different types of books there are. For example, e-books, audio books, physical books, textbooks, etc. We've talked about fiction and non-fiction, which kind of books you prefer. And also, we've talked about the, re the fact that you don't have to read books you don't want to read. And that the perfect book for you might not be the perfect book for someone else. So, I'm going to stop this lesson here. But before I do, I want you to check out my latest, le le latest lesson on YouTube. And it's about get through. Okay, so go to my YouTube channel and check this out. I'll leave a little um, link below in the comment section. Here it is. Get through, learn common English phrasal verbs. Here I am with a very funny face. And you can find this on my YouTube channel, which is over here to fluency. Okay, find this on my YouTube channel to fluency. Get through. Also, add me on Snapchat. You can do so here if that's going to focus. I'll leave the link for that below. So once again, thank you so much for being here. Please share this lesson with anyone who would find it useful. Just click the share button or tag someone in the comment section. And please click like or love. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next live lesson, which is going to be this Friday. So I'll see you there. Bye, everyone.